started from the bottom and now we are here 2013 was a wild year and that song was an anthem for many hard workers out there thanks to canadian rapper aubrey jack graham the richest man on the asian continent at the time was indian billionaire businessman mukesh dirubai ambani his story is so profound you can watch it here today the richest man on the asian continent is gotam adani and in an unseen before the occurrence, Adani has risen to the third richest person in the world, which puts him just behind Twitter, Tesla Don Elon Musk, and Amazon CEO, Jeff Bezos. Fellow Indian citizen Mukesh Ambani and China's Jack Ma never made it that far. However, with a 137.4 billion fortune, Adani has overtaken Francis Bernard Arnold and now trails just Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos of the US in the ranking. Adani, who runs one of India's top conglomerates, is now believed to be worth approximately $137 billion. Gautam Adani, an Indian billionaire industrialist, was born in a Gujarati Jain family on 24th June 1962 in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. His father's name is Shantilal, Adani and his mother's name is Shanti Adani. Gautam completed his schooling at Sheth Shimanal Najinda's Vidyalaya School in Ahmedabad. He enrolled in a bachelor's degree in commerce at Gujarat University where he realized academics was not for him. Adani dropped out of his degree in second year and moved to Mumbai from Ahmedabad. He turned down the chance to be part of the family business in textiles to venture out on his own and landed a job at the Mahindra Brothers as a diamond sorter for about three years. Later, he set up his own diamond brokerage business, which was so successful that he was a millionaire by the time he was 20. In 1981, his brother asked him to return home to run a small plastics factory, which he did. He also went into business with a cousin and it was from there that he began to double in commodities and import-export the foundation of his future empire. In 1991, Adani started expanding the businesses into trading agro-products, textiles and metals. In 1993, Adani got a contract from the government of Gujarat for managerial outsourcing of the Mundra port. In 1995, Adani started its first jetty, which was operated by Mundra Port and Special Economic Zone. Mundra Port has a handling capacity of more than 200 million tons of cargo per annum, and it's the largest private sector port in India. In 1996, Adani Power Limited was founded by Adani. It is the power business arm of the Adani Group. Adani Power holds 4,620 megawatts thermal power plants, and Adani Power Limited is the largest private thermal power producer in India. He owns India's largest private port operator, biggest private thermal power producer. He is not only one of the largest developers and operators of coal mines in India, but also operates the controversial Carmichael coal mine in Australia, which has faced fierce opposition from climate change campaigners who say it is a death sentence for the Great Barrier Reef. Adani has spent the past few years expanding his call to ports conglomerate, venturing into everything from data centers to cement, media, and alumina. The group now owns India's largest private sector port, an airport operator, city gas distributor, and coal miner. While its Carmichael mine in Australia has been criticized by environmentalists, it pledged in November to invest $70 billion in green energy to become the world's largest renewable energy producer. His fortune has grown exponentially since the start of the global health crisis as investors bet on his ability to grow his business in sectors that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has prioritized for development. Adani has also benefited from an uptick in coal usage which has catapulted his ascent in recent months, according to Bloomberg. Adani overtook fellow Indian tycoon Mukesh Ambani to become the region's wealthiest person in February. His shot up the global wealth rankings comes as some members of the world's 1% give away more of their resources. On a late August evening in New Delhi, 
journalists phone started buzzing with messages. Indian billionaire Gautam and Danny's conglomerate had launched a hostile bid to take over an influential broadcaster in the capital. The infrastructure tycoon is known for making bold and expensive acquisitions in diverse fields. Yet, his attempts to acquire New Delhi Television sent a frisson of fear through Indian journalism, reigniting concerns about shrinking editorial freedom in the world's largest democracy. That's because NDTV is one of the few major broadcasters left in India that is often critical of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party. And 60-year-old Adani is perceived to be one of Modi's closest business allies. The Adani Group's still incomplete takeover bid has stoked debate in India over media independence with the tycoon perceived to be aligned with the Modi government. At the same time, NDTV is known for airing voices critical of it. Some critics, including journalists and prominent politicians from opposition parties in India, have claimed that Adani's closeness to Modi has contributed to his material rise. Rivals also questioned Modi's use of Adani aircraft while he was campaigning to become Prime Minister in 2014. In an interview with the Economic Times, the billionaire denied there was anything inappropriate about arrangement and said that none of the private planes were used for free. Opposition politicians allege Adani benefits from a close association with Modi, a fellow Gujarati. Modi was Gujarat's chief minister for 13 years before he became premier in 2014. Adani rejected allegations of impropriety but acknowledged his group aligned itself with the government's development priorities. He said investors were buying into India's success story. Most people, if we are lucky, can get through life without facing any brushes with death. But the world's billionaires are not most people. In 1998, well before he was recognized as the second richest man in Asia, Adani caught the attention of two gangsters, Fazul Rahman and Bogilau Darji, who wanted to extort him for money. This was a decade after he founded the Adani Group in 1988, which was then a commodity trading venture with Adani Exports, now Adani Enterprises, at the forefront. According to ET Now News, Adani and his companion Shantilal Patel were allegedly stopped at gunpoint in a car as they were leaving the Kamavati Club in Ahmedabad, India. A scooter forced the car to stop and a group of men that abducted Adani and Patel in a van. While the charge sheet did not reveal where Adani and Patel were taken, nor what happened to them during the hours that they disappeared, we do know that they were eventually set free. But their freedom came at a high price, as the kidnappers were allegedly able to extort roughly 2 million US dollars from Adani's family before he was let go, according to the Indian Express. Now according to India Today, on November 26, 2008, Adani was having dinner at Mumbai's famous Taj Mahal Palace with Dubai port CEO Muhammad Sharaf when the hotel was attacked by 10 Lashkar e Taiba terrorists. Because their table was high up, Adani was able to see that the terrorists were fighting in the direction of the swimming pool passage. Resourceful hotel staff helped him and other guests escape to the basement before relocating to a chamber hall on the upper floor. They spent the night hiding there. Adani and the other guests were eventually rescued by security personnel at 8.45 a.m. the following morning and transported away from the scene in a police van. The Times of India reported that when Adani landed at the Ahmedabad airport from his private aircraft later that day, he said, I saw death at a distance of just